Um, this charm or this uh, clothespin I actually made myself because I didn't have large clothespins. So, and I saw that uh, in the book that inspired me she used this large clothespin and she had also this kind of charms hanged there but they were sliding up and down yeah depending how you were holding the book so they were kind of sliding because it's just one line so the advantage of making it myself is just i made these loops and i made them what i wanted them to be so i can hang the charms and they are not sliding up and down yeah so uh that's the advantage so that's one and this is just uh, a normal beer bottle cup i have plenty of those from colleagues who drink beer i asked them to save them for me um so i flattened them down with a hammer and i colored it with uh, acrylic paint to give it a different color and i used a sandpaper to get a little bit of that paint off so you get this kind of worn effect so that's it um i didn't remove this plastic inside what's there i i didn't bother removing it so i just glued the paper uh, that is under it so i just glued it directly on that and i used hot glue so i tried to fill these spaces in there and uh, then I just glued the plant that I have there on it and I used, I think this is like dimensional media or something to put on on it to kind of have the re resin effect, you know, so that's that's what I did with, with that. Um, I can show you how I was making this... Um, big uh, clothes tag i have like pieces of wires like this um already for many years it's still from my ex-husband i don't know what he was using it for but yeah it remained with me and uh, i thought that i will have a use for them so um yeah so that's pretty much how it is so just to make it a little bit more straight well every press of this um of the pliers i think you call this creates like a print scratch on the wire but i find it kind of like a I find it like that's what I actually want. <laughs> it makes it look like it's worn and imperfect. So here you just think how big you want to have it, you know, what this what's what should be the size of the uh what should be the size of um your uh pin and uh, where it should end just put the pencil or something and just wrap it around there we go well the bigger circle you want to have the the bigger thing to wrap around you should find and here we go Push it down and I just give it a squeeze a little bit. So where if I want to have a loop, I don't know, approximately here. So I'll bend this down. And go around. So one loop
then it goes up and down depending how big you want to have it I made it too big so smaller here Like that. And cut the end. You have four loops. I mean, you can make as many as you want or you can fit in. I guess it's on your skill. Um, here at the end actually I had already I wanted to put uh, because it's kind of sharp I wanted to add just a bead at the end once I have it placed and I this is not going to be removed anymore so I was going to place a bead and a glue it there so there is no injury because this was it's it's here on the top but I just bent the, the metal down into the fabric so it's kind of safe there so I didn't have to do that. But um, I mean you can just put all the way beads here for decorational purposes so just open it and just add whatever decoration beads you want. You can put more wire around for decoration, you can add uh, some fabric here around. I mean there are so many things what you can do with this. So. That's one thing. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this is the wire. If you don't have the wire like this, maybe, maybe you have a wire from like a champagne bottle or some kind of bubbly wine. So this is a wire from, from that. It just takes a little bit of time to unwind it and uh, use the pliers and play around to uh, make it a little bit straight. It's not perfectly straight. It may be playing around to do that, but that gives you also a wire that you can use for this. Okay, I'm back. And uh, here I was showing also in the video, it's a detail of um, a wire dragonfly. I found um, short tutorials or videos on Pinterest uh, there are many easy ones how to make dragonflies or, or some other animals or insects and stuff. So I was just trying and made some. And I had it also for a while, so I used it for uh, this journal or book, whatever you name it. Um, this was bought, so I didn't make that. And what I made... This is just a button. It's a vintage button. It had this kind of like hook thing. So I just cut it off with the pliers to make it more flat so it doesn't stand up. Uh, these are stems, I think you call it, inside the flowers. So I bought a bunch of them and uh, I just used them for decoration there. Uh, here I'm not sure if it's going to be visible this bulb actually I saw on Pinterest very interesting picture and I was intrigued how they made it and I haven't seen how they made it I just saw there for sale this kind of um, bulbs so what I thought I would try um, was um, actually to stamp bulbs on the acetate um unfortunately my uh, stamp is really dry um i think i need to buy a new one um and this uh so instead of stamping i actually made drawings with permanent ink over the stamping a little bit and um What I did then after, I cut them out uh, around where the bulb is supposed to be. So I cut it out on that acetate, from that acetate. 
and I flipped it upside down so the the drawing or the stamp is on the other side and then I added ah, yeah that's what I could have expected so then I added this uh, dimensional thing you know it's the liquid from much part if I'm not mistaken and I have one from I think it's some Holland brand and um, it's like a giving a 3d effect but I think I didn't add enough because after drawing when it was still wet it was really nicely rounded so I was like ah oh, this is going to be so cool as on that picture that I have seen on uh, Pinterest but once it dried out it became really flat so it doesn't have really a lot of dimension as you can see so um little bit disappointing so I'm still thinking if I should try to give it like two more layers you know one uh, or more and see how it comes out uh, one of them I'm not sure if it was this dimensional thingy it didn't dry out very well it kind of disformed like this one it kind of disformed the the acetate a little bit and inside it stayed a little bit yellowish and created bubbles um, but it's okay I mean I didn't expect it to be perfect at the first time and it can be yellowish because it's a bulb but um, it didn't it didn't uh, unfortunately work the way that I was hoping it to be completely but it's all right I mean it's a first test and I'm planning to experiment on it again you know to to add one more layer or two more layers wait till it dries it took like two days to dry so and see if it gets more dimensional you know the the bulb because it was on that picture it was really like nicely rounded not completely but bigger than what i have achieved here so anyway so one of those my one of those attempts is is um here as you can see i just glued it to this cutout from uh, from the magazine so uh all the pictures that i'm actually using oh not this one um like this it's from brochures it's from magazines it's from so i didn't purchase anything i didn't find on internet those were on free um uh, paper magazines or whatever I had at home that I used um, this is actually um, this is actually some kind of like a silver colored paper that I had I stamped on it and I used this um, transparent um, transparent how you call it embossing powder on it um to give it a little bit of this kind of um nice effect i how is it called ice embossing i have to check it again on internet because there are a few videos of people who are doing it making beautiful postcards and i really loved it so i made few of them and it worked well so i will do that again where i was heading was actually this um this one um i mean uh they are easy to make uh nothing nothing really special about that um it's just um one of the uh whatever you have as um soda uh how you call it how do you call this i forgot now i lost the word so you know what it is so this one is actually from um, meat can. It's not from soda. This is from some meat or something. I have only very few of them. I don't even know where I have them from. So I have few of them with this large opening. So it came handy that I could fit a bigger bead. This is um, my bead that uh, I made from uh, air drying uh, clay. So that's my also work. So... Um, what i was going to say regarding this um so that's part of the recycling uh, as i was telling you this wire is from um, champagne or something i always save those uh, wires from there so i'm repurposing them for whatever i want these 
these fine ones that I use are from um, ribbons. So I either get from friends ribbons once they don't want to use some anymore. Um, and you have these big ribbons and they have kind of a wire at the edges. So when you make a bow, it will stand, you know, so you can form it so it will have a nice form. So also florists use those kind of big ribbons, but they are also in a smaller ribbon. So in different kind of ribbons, I never use ribbons for like wrapping a package. I use them for journals or something for decorational purposes and I remove those wires out. So those ones I use for things like this, like I put this one on the side, they are fine and flexible and they are still a wire. So those ones I use and recycle. Mm, thinking what else? I think that's pretty much it. This is just a piece of leather that I cut to size, punch holes in it. And this is uh, a button from jeans also, so I made it like kind of a fake belt. Uh, this page, uh, it's, it's, it's a double page, yes. Um, I attached with um, pins, the largest pins I have, clothes pins. So the first thing I did is actually to sew the fabric around the pin. So that was the first thing because they open on this side, yeah? I was then attaching it to this fabric later once this was all done. So first, um, let me show maybe on some. Do I have here some piece of, let me see if this, so imagine this is the piece of fabric. So I first, um, Attach the piece of fabric, so I will put it in this way, so it's that way. So I put, um, it would be on this side to make it more logic for you, because the closing is here, so yeah. And I sewn, I've sewn the fabric here first. Then you end up with two flops, or how do you call this, two ends, yes. And I took a paper. And I don't have any paper right now, just a second. So here we go. So I put, because these are two papers, right? So I put here, you see, this one is free. There is nothing on it. And on this one, to this one, I attached those two papers here and I saw around yeah so one was here already attached and then I did the same with this second one so I already had two attached to I'm sorry here so you can do one you can do two and then just go through the fabric and you have it in I hope I was clear with this explaining. 